встал утром 18 июля и думаю, что у меня еще не болит. Оказалось, что не болят плечи. Надо исправить эту ошибку. Должно болеть все. Поэтому мы их сейчас убивать будем. Убивать. <смех> Убил! Я еще что-то еще поделаю. Надо их забить до конца. What's up, nerds? So today we're talking about overhead pressing and is it worth it? So in this video we're going to talk about the benefits and drawbacks of overhead pressing, the potential dangers, what kind of preparation you might need, a bunch of different variations, and if they are suitable for your goals and ultimately if they are worth doing at all. So first I want to talk about the risk of injury because I think this is where the most egregious misinformation lies. And I use the word lies for a reason because there's a lot of that going on around out there, especially on YouTube fitness. Now the shoulder joint is one of the most mobile joints in the body. Generally there's a continuum between joint mobility and joint stability. So the more mobile a joint is, the less inherently stable it is, and vice versa. If you take the SI joint, it is not very mobile at all, but it is extremely stable. And the shoulder is way on the other end where you have a ton of mobility. There's a, a lot of stuff that you can do in terms of you know rotation and, and ad abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, etc. But that means that it's just gonna be less stable. Additionally, a lot of people don't have a good base of movement to draw from when they start lifting weights. So for them, maybe they've never gotten into an overhead position under any kind of loading in their lives. Plus, a lot of people, they don't have good posture, they're at their computer all day, and they just have never actually used the muscles needed to get in that safe overhead position. That doesn't mean pressing overhead is bad, it means a lot of people are not prepared to do that. Furthermore, there are inherent differences and variability in terms of the actual structure, the morphology of the shoulder itself. So some people have this acromion process that is just, it's hooked over. With a little bit of curve. Bursa. With an uppercut. How that shoulder. Captain Hook. And for them, they might have trouble overhead pressing. If you see this, it's basically your body giving you the middle finger. And this might explain why some people just don't seem to ever really get the hang of overhead pressing. It always causes discomfort or pain. That could be this, or perhaps they're just doing it wrong, or they have weak muscles in the upper back and they can't upwardly rotate their scapula to get in a safe position. A lot of people are blaming the movement when in fact it's their bodies or their own personal training choices or lifestyle habits. Also keep in mind that everyone's levels of mobility in and around the shoulder are different, and therefore it's important to select the right movements for you. Not everyone can do everything in life, and exercise is no exception. In terms of the muscles worked, it's gonna be triceps, front delt, a bit of side delt, very little rear delt. If someone says they're overhead pressing for the rear delts, they are very mistaken. A bit of upper chest and then also upper back, especially with some variations. Plus, it's going to be working your core, especially, I hate the word core, but it's just, it is what it is. Uh, so your serratus, your overall core stability, glutes and quads for standing variations. Now, is it going to work those areas better than any other movement out there? Probably not. Upper chest well, it's not gonna be the prime mover. You're better off doing something like a flat barbell or dumbbell bench press, incline bench press, or you know, even something like a reverse grip bench press. Those are all gonna be more efficient at targeting that area. When it comes to the side delt, same story. Compared to a cable lateral raise, dumbbell lateral raise, an upright row, overhead pressing is just not a great side delt movement in general. Even behind the neck or a cloak off press, it's not going to be the best side delt movement. 
For triceps, I would say dips, close grip bench press, and then specific overhead extensions or push downs, that type of thing, they're going to be much better. For the front delt, incline pressing is going to be at least as good. Uh, dips are also excellent. Flat barbell bench press, again, it's going to be a lot of front delt anyway. Plus, how many people have lagging front delts? Not very many. So it's sort of a jack-of-all-trades movement pattern where it's working a wide variety of muscles of the upper body, but it's not going to be the go-to movement to bring up any one specific area. So why press at all? Well, you might want to have time efficiency in your program. Instead of doing, you know, one triceps movement and one front delt movement and, and side delt and then, you know, an upper chest movement or, you know, doing one of these crossbody front races or something like that, those are all fine, but you might just want to have one movement that is good enough to develop them. You can still get jacked from pressing. Trust me. And if you can't, it's not the movement. It's you. Now, in terms of variations that you might want to include in your training, my book goes into a lot of detail on this. Number one would be the barbell standing press. So this is pretty much the tried and true standard movement. The barbell does lock you into place, so you can't really rotate on the bar, but that's not that much of an issue for most people. It's also quite fail friendly. So if you fail the lift, you go up a little bit, you fail, you go back down, then you put it back in the rack. Easy peasy. The other option is doing it seated. This is a little bit less friendly. You can do it in a power rack with the safeties, which is nice. If you don't have those, I would just stay away from this movement because if you go up and then you fail, mm, tricky. You also have the cloak off press, which is behind the neck with a wide snatch grip. This is going to be a little bit less triceps because you know, there's less range of motion there. It's also going to be less range of motion at the shoulder. See here compared to here. But this is an excellent front delt movement, plus you're getting a little more side delt and a little more upper back involvement as well. And again, if you don't have the mobility to get in the position to do it, don't do it or get it, but don't do it without getting it. You also have the Bradford press here demonstrated by natural hypertrophy. And so this is where you're going sort of over the head and then behind and then back in front, more of a rhythmic, lighter, constant tension type of movement. Yeah, it's light, but it'll still get you jacked. Interestingly, and I've heard this several times from other people before as well, natural hypertrophy says that if he doesn't do overhead pressing, his shoulders hurt. Yeah, if he doesn't do it, his shoulders hurt. And this is something I've heard several times before as well, where if they don't use that range of motion and they keep doing bench presses and stuff, they get shoulder issues. So you want to be strong in all planes of movement. There's also the push press where you're using an explosive leg drive and I, I guess also hip drive to get the bar moving and to move more weight overhead. Here is Dmitry Klokov doing 225, which pff, I could do that. Yo, bro, that's in kilos. It's like 500 pounds. Oh, fuck. You can also, of course, use dumbbells. And if you're just a hypertrophy enthusiast, I would say dumbbells are probably the way to go just because you have a lot more freedom of movement. The one downside is probably that they can be difficult to get in position compared to a barbell, but if you can kick them up and get them moving, it's an excellent option. I prefer seated. Some people do them standing. I would say go by feel and see which variation is right for you. I'm also quite fond of the Arnold press. So this is where you're using extra range of motion at the bottom. You're not just stopping here and using this part of the range of motion, but you're moving them down in front to get even more range of motion and a stretch on that front deltoid in the bottom position. We do know that a loaded stretch is going to be very, very important for hypertrophy. So I would say taking that extra range of motion is potentially excellent. Sidebar, they also blew my traps up. You also have the Z press where you're butt is on the ground and your feet are out in front of you and the bar is in a rack around your clavicle height position or so and then you have to just press it overhead like that this is a little bit challenging in terms of balancing i don't find them to be that difficult in terms of balance and i'm almost as strong on them as i am with a strict standard press 
Your results may vary. Try them out. See if you like them. They are definitely not for everyone. There's also a log press, which uses a neutral grip. A lot of people find this just to be easier on the shoulders. If you don't have access to one, you can also use a trap bar, which is a little bit wider, but has a similar feel to it. You can also use a machine press. I typically am not really a fan of these. I like a lot of chest press machines, but shoulder press machines, I think you need a little bit more freedom of movement, relatively speaking, and I have yet to find a shoulder press machine that I really, really like. For you, that might be different, so give them a shot and see how they feel. And remember, the first time you try a new position, it might feel a little bit weird. It might feel a little uncomfortable. It might even hurt a little bit. But as you get used to that position, you ease into these positions, it's going to start to feel a whole lot better. Now, some might say that push pressing is not going to be developing the shoulders because there's not enough time under tension. I would say that's not the case. You're putting a massive load on the shoulders. So should you press? Well, if you're a strongman competitor or an aspiring strongman competitor, yeah, you should press especially with your log. You gotta get really, really good with that log. You gotta get in a lot of touches with that log. It's a log function. Get a real job, face is terrible. Editor, cut that out, it didn't. I want my money back. If you are an Olympic weightlifter, maybe. The Russians seem to overhead press quite a bit. The Chinese guys almost don't press at all, it seems. They don't even push press. It's just all jerks, baby. (laughs) If you are a power lifter, I would say maybe as well. You look at some power lifters like Dan Green. They do overhead work. Julius Maddox, one of the greatest bench pressers, if not the greatest bench presser of all time. He also does some overhead work. So if you have issues overhead, you're probably eventually going to get issues from bench pressing. Just speaking observationally from anecdotal experience. You want to make sure that your joints are stable in many different positions, even if you are a power lifter. That being said, I wouldn't expect a huge carryover for most people. If you want to get a big bench, you got to do mostly horizontal type of work. If you're a bodybuilder, someone who just wants to look aesthetic, someone who is a hypertrophy enthusiasts, a getting buff aficionado, whatever you want to say, a gym bro who wants to get laid more often, is pressing worth it? Again, unsurprisingly, the answer is maybe. I would say it's fairly disposable. So you don't necessarily have to overhead press to look aesthetic because again, for any of these muscle groups, whether it's the upper chest or the traps or the side delts or the front delts or the triceps, there are replacements for sure. On the other hand, I think it is essential to get strong in many different planes of movement and throwing out everything in this plane of movement, everything in the vertical plane, I think is really just silly. And if you have issues when going overhead, more often than not, it's not the movement. It's how you're doing it. It's how you're structuring it in your program, or it's your physical preparedness or your lifestyle in terms of just the positions that you're in on a daily basis. And I think these people vilifying these movements, even behind the neck stuff, are wrong. I'm just going to say, I think they are wrong. And I'm glad that the industry seems to be changing where we're saying, okay, well, you're not going to get hurt by doing certain movements. It's more nuanced than just this movement is bad and it's in the iron graveyard or whatever. And above all, go by feel. So if something feels wrong, modify it. Don't entirely throw it out, especially an entire movement pattern. Modify it. Know your body and what you can do, not what someone else on the internet says you can do. That's all this video. I'm going to go press some weights in the gym, which is in the direction that I am pointing, mostly because I want to, but also for some dope B-roll footage. Oh, grab my book, like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal.